Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me. I'm Cheryl and this is Your Journey Yoga. Today we are going to explore fascia release and some yoga stretches and noticing the difference um, after a little bit of fascia work. Maybe the range of motion is a little bit better. Um, maybe we're a little less restricted. Uh, little less discomfort as we come into some of those poses. So it's really a fascinating um, exploration of our bodies. So a lot of times we don't think about fascia. Fascia is a soft tissue that surrounds our organs, our muscles, our joints, our tendons, our ligaments. It is everywhere in our body. And from time to time, it can get dehydrated. Um, as the days pass, uh, it can have some wear and tear. It can get entangled. Um, oftentimes we feel that we have a um, knot in our muscle when in fact it could very well be your fascia being dehydrated, being stressed, um, being damaged, and it's kind of all wound up into a little ball. So as we explore, I want you to be mindful. So if there is pain involved, I want you to really pay attention to where that pain scale is and if it is a hurt so good or a hurt so bad. Anytime you're someplace where it hurts so bad, we don't want to be there. Okay, so the hurt so good can be really challenging, but you know instinctually that you're doing something good for your body. Um, so your gut and your body knows um, your breath is a great indicator. So if you're holding your breath and you've got this oh, squenched up face, your eyes are squeezed shut, your jaw is locked up and you just can't release, that's a really good indication to back off a little bit or back out entirely. So know that everything we do is optional, you guys. So what we're gonna be using today is a foam roller if you do not have a foam roller, it is okay. Um, you can also use a ball. So I have several balls here. We have a lacrosse ball, a massage ball, and inside this beautiful little sock is um, a couple tennis balls. So um, I've just put these two into a sock to create um, kind of a dual action um, massaging technique. So we'll do that a little bit later too, but just inside a tennis ball. So I'm gonna take this guy out for now just so that I have an individual ball. So kind of levels of intensity. Tennis balls are a little bit nicer. Um, massage ball is probably your next friend. Um, uh, gets in a little bit more deeper. Um, not quite as nice, but still pretty nice. And then this, my friends, is a lacrosse ball. Um, if you have in your arsenal a baseball or a softball, so not necessarily a soft ball, but a softball, kind of you would do the underhand um, softball games, yes. So those are actually fabulous um, as well. And when we get into our feet, a golf ball. And a little trick that's kind of fun is if you throw that golf ball in the freezer and then use it, um, can really be beneficial if you're suffering from plantar fasciitis, um, really, really tight calves, a lot of times that can start in your feet. So we are going to start in our feet. So picking whatever ball you have handy, if you have um, multiple I'd go for the, the, the doozy, the um, hardest, most dense ball that you have. So if that's a golf ball, great. If it's a lacrosse ball, if it's a tennis ball, whatever it is. And we're just going to set it on the ground and we're going to bring our foot, either foot. And I want you to start kind of just between your toes. So let your toes kind of wrap around that ball. And I want you to lean forward a little bit. So we're pressing into that ball and then we're releasing that pressure. We press in and come back. Now, if you're gonna, you can move, kind of going underneath each toe at the ball of your foot, feeling as much pressure as feels good to you, and then releasing that pressure. Nice. So just noticing how that feels. Staying strong through the core, staying tall in your posture. We're not hunching forward, we're always promoting good posture. We don't want to do work on our feet and then have the rest of the body fall apart. Good, so we'll do this one more pass. So I've kind of made a couple passes to the left and to the right. So I'm gonna work my way back to behind my big toe and then I'm gonna come back to center. So kind of just centering on that ball of the foot, 
Now I'm going to bring my other foot a little bit closer. So you're just going to have to kind of play with the stance of your feet to figure out what works for you. And I'm going to move the ball back behind the ball of my foot, not quite to the arch. And I'm just going to make little circles. Now you can go clockwise and counterclockwise as slow or as fast as you like. And if you're like, wow, I just found a spot, stay on it, hold it there do little passes forward and back. So as we go along the striations of the muscles, ooh, what do you feel? I just found a fun little spot. So I'm gonna stay there. Now I'm in the arch of my feet because as I was tr passing through that front and back motion, I found kind of this ropey feeling. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I can just tell, it's kind of a little knot in the arch of my foot. And then I'm gonna go side to side. Little just side to side movements, nothing big guys. And then I'm gonna slowly move to the heel. And as I come to my heel, I'm actually gonna place my toes on the ground and I'm gonna step forward so that I can press my heel into that ball. So I've got about a 90% weight on that foot that's got the ball and then about 10 on that back foot. So it's just kind of like a little kickstand, almost like you're standing in a high heeled shoe. And then bring your weight back to that other leg and we're gonna switch sides. So we wanna make sure, even if you have one foot that gives you a little more trouble than the other, that you actually take care of both. So really important that you spend time, even if it's time that you're like, yeah, I don't really feel anything, you're still getting good stuff done. So just focus on that. And I pass from side to side just move in behind each toe, a little pressure, each pushing kind of between those toes, creating space between those toes. So this is great, you guys, to get the blood flowing. So if anybody has um, any kind of numbness in their feet, neuropathy, um, this can really help. It's not gonna change it, but it can help stop or slow down. Um, really just activating all of the muscles, the nerves, the nerve endings, the skin, the blood flow, really getting some activation into those feet, always good. And again, we do four or five passes back and forth, and you're just gonna kind of find, do you feel as much on this side? Now notice if you're right-handed, left-handed, right-footed, left-footed, does one side, your dominant side, does that need a little extra love? Probably. That's pretty typical. And then we're going to move to just behind the ball of the foot. And we're just going to go side to side and front to back. So fascial work, you guys, doesn't have to be a ton of time. But the more time you have to spend, the more results you're going to get. The more consistent you are is better than spending a ton of time. So if you'll come back to this each and every day, I know that's a lot, maybe every other day, maybe twice a week, but the more time you can come back, this consistency is key, you guys. So as I move into the arch of my foot, I'm just transitioning as much weight forward onto that ball as my body is like, yeah, I can handle that. And there is no reason to go above an eight, much like our stretching, right? We don't need to go above an eight. There is no reason that we need to cause ourselves pain. We are trying to alleviate pain. So keeping that core strong, keeping that posture nice and tall, and I'm just going to back off the weight and now I'm just going to roll front to back and side to side. Noticing that I'm kind of pulling my toes back a little bit so my foot's not totally relaxed. I'm actually drawing those toes up to elongate all of that fascia, all the muscles at the base of the foot. This one feels pretty good. Hopefully it does for you too. I got a little bit going on but not too much. So if you're a big time runner um, any kind of athletics that you're on your feet a ton. Um, if you are a power walker or a hiker, you're going to feel this, you guys. And this is really important. And then as we transition forward, ball of the foot and toes come to the floor. And we're going to get that ball right underneath our heel. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see that a little bit better. So right underneath that heel. And then I'm going to stand. So I'm going to come forward. Again, I'm just kind of balancing with that back leg. 90% of my weight is on the foot with the ball underneath it. And if it's okay and you have the strength in the ankles and it doesn't bother the ankles at all, you can kind of shift your weight side to side. This is not a big movement. So literally I'm just kind of rolling my foot inside, outside. 
and then slowly transition back. Ah, that feels pretty good. So we're gonna do a little fun exercise. You can hold on to your ball. You can take the, or set the ball aside, doesn't matter. We're gonna do, actually let's set the ball aside. We'll see if it'll stay right there. So big shoulder roll up and back. Shoulders slide down and away. We're gonna pull the hands to heart center. Keeping that core nice and strong, find a focal point. We're gonna shift our weight forward and we're gonna come up to the balls of the feet. Breathe. Now I want you to notice if you're feeling a little bit more sensation through the base of your foot. Do you feel solid? Do you feel stronger? I do. And it's kind of a cool sensation. Now slowly release the heels back and we're going to rock back to the heels and we're going to lift our toes. So as you lift your toes, I want you to spread them. I want you to spread those toes. And if you spread your fingers, it helps to spread your toes. This does not have to be perfection. You should not have to feel like, wow, I can put like marbles in between each toe. Everybody's different. Some people can spread really, really wide. I just want you to send that message to your feet. And I want you to feel the activation through your ankles, through your calves, through your core and breathe. So with those fingers spread wide, we're going to place both pinkies to the mat. It helps if you work with your um, fingers. So those pinky toes come down, second toe comes down. We're still working to keep that space between those toes. Doesn't have to be beautiful, guys. Don't even look down. Third toe, that middle toe pressing down. Fourth toe. And now all 10 toes, plant them into the mat. Relax the shoulders. Breathe. Big shoulder roll up and back. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, swan dive to forward fold. And as we're in our forward fold, I just want you to notice there's a soft bend in the knees, so there's no pressure behind the knees. I want you to notice the lower back. I want you to notice the hamstrings and the calves. Mm, I find that big deep breath. Let yourself sink. Let your arms be heavy. Let your head be heavy. Let's bring the hands to the elbows and hold on and then gently sway side to side. A little arc around your legs. Breathe. We come back to center, releasing the arms. We're going to shift our weight to our heels, bending the knees, and slowly coming down into a tight little squat. Now, if you're taking care of your knees today, find a safe way to come down onto your bottom. Knees are good and happy and healthy. Extend those arms out. I want you to notice, can you be on your heels or are you up on your toes? If you are up on your toes, that's a good indication that you have super tight calves, and that's totally fine because we're going to get into those next. Release your hands, lower yourself down. So calf work, you can choose whatever tool you like. So to start, pick a ball, any kind of ball you like. So I'm feeling pretty decent, so I'm going to take the lacrosse ball. If you're like, I know my calves are super tight, I'm going to start with the tennis ball. Make it happen. So we're going to place the ball. We're going to bend that knee and bring the shin kind of just straight across us. And then the, the other foot is just going to be out and away from us a bit. Hands come behind us and we're going to press this knee, the one with the ball underneath the calf, down towards the mat. So you're going to feel kind of an activation through your hip, through your glutes, and through those obliques. And we're going to roll right along the striation of the outside of that calf. And we're going to go from ankle to just below the knee. Finding that breath. Now, if that's not super, it's not great, back off a little bit. Don't push so hard. If you're like, I want more. I want you to lean forward, place that ball wherever you need it. And I want you to help. So lifting through the ankle. So you're going to engage that opposite arm and you're going to press same arm as the knee and you're going to press it down. Now, I don't want you to lift the ankle to the point where you're lifting off the ball, but I want you to kind of try and level out that leg and we're going to move that leg side to side. So as we roll along the striation of the muscle, do you feel any of that ropiness? Now you can transition because you might not get that full roll, so you might need to move. And having come down by the ankle. So a lot of times, like if you're feeling, wow, I've got this like huge uh, cramp in my calf, it could be the culprit's lower or higher rather than right on that spot. And there's just kind of a residual nerve shooting up that's sending that message. So come low, come high, and then come on. 
So just deciding kind of where should you start, doesn't matter. You can start either place, just start. And then we're gonna calm down towards that knee. Don't wanna go right on the bone, but I'm gonna just gently press. So as I place the ball, I'm just gonna put it kind of not mid belly, not knee. So it's kind of as that gastric nemius comes down, as it starts to fill out, kind of just right about there, you'll feel it. And then we're gonna come over on it. You can always move. So just find that spot. And now I'm going to shift my weight towards that leg and I'm gonna press, hello. So as I press that knee down, this is a beautiful spot for me. Hopefully you're feeling it too. And I'm gonna point and flex my foot. Oh my goodness. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so just that pressure guys is like a little massage. And then as I'm moving the ankle, that's gonna activate the muscle in a different way. Now I'm just gonna move a little bit. So the sneaky thing with fascia, as it starts to release, it can actually shift. So it can go up or down. So we just wanna kinda of continue. We don't need to do anything right above an eight. Nope, don't need it. And you might not notice that it goes all the way away, but it gets a little bit better. And then I'm gonna come down kinda of just below my knee. So again, I'm transitioning now to just below the knee, maybe four or five inches down below. But you guys, you can come as close to the knee, just not right on your bone, okay? So you can come up high, you can take it lower. It's really, it's exploring your body and finding where you need the work. All right, then we're gonna transition back and we're gonna same leg and we're gonna take the ball and we're gonna place it underneath the calf. Now this, this can be mean, okay? So you might transition to your tennis ball. You might transition to the foam roller if you have one. So with the ball underneath the calf, lots of different ways to intensify things. So just sitting up nice and tall. The other leg is just there for support. Again, you can point and flex your foot, change that up just by changing the length of the muscles along with the pressure and the movement guys just gives us a totally different sensation. And you can physically move the ball. You can lift up off of your bottom and you can start to roll along the striation of the muscle is just forward and back. You can rotate your foot out and get along the outside of that calf. Opening up through the hip a little bit, staying strong through that core, being mindful of your shoulders. We can roll the foot, Oop, lost the ball. So that's uh, one of the things with slippery balls. You gotta take care of it so that it's not gonna slide away. So I'm gonna shift because this massage ball has a little bit more grip to it. Not a lot, but a little. I think these pants are just slippery. Breathe. There we go. It's one of the fun things too. Makes you laugh, shooting balls out from underneath your calf. Should be a game, right? The other thing you can do, cross your leg. So if you've been done this um, with me before, hopefully you've been working and it's not quite so bad. So you don't even have to lift your bum, just pressing through that top leg, that'll get you. And you can kind of rock side to side if you like. Oh my goodness. Oh, I just found a spot. Did you find a spot? If you're feeling absolutely fantastic, you can even lift. Lifting your bum, creating weight, pressing it into that ball. That's an intensification, you guys. So really be nice. If you're feeling like, wow, that's not great, don't do it. Listen to your body. This is not about working through pain, you guys. This is working to get rid of pain. Awesome. And then we're gonna take other side. So I'm gonna switch back to my lacrosse ball just because the outside of the shin, not quite as bad. And the other leg is gonna come up. So remember, we had different variations. So just starting, play with it a little bit. What do you feel? So just transitioning kind of weight if you need to lift your bottom a little bit. If you wanna press down with that um, knee that's got the ball underneath that can just activate more intensity. We're just sliding that ball back and forth and front and back. So I'm gonna move it now up just above, um, just below that knee and come forward. 
So this side's not nearly as tight for me. So I am right-handed, so that right leg kind of takes the brunt of things, I guess, um, for most of it. No shock there. And I'm just gonna press, pressing down. So come to a place where you feel like you can sit up tall, that you're not just like hunching over and letting that posture be terrible. We want to keep that posture. I'm telling you, these pants are slippery. And then pressing. So working with that ball wherever you need it. And it's not going to be the same on this side as it was the other. And then point and flexing that foot. We can sit up tall and we can gently press. I'm just going to shift it because I feel like I need it a little bit higher. One thing too with the smaller ones, the smaller balls, the lacrosse balls versus um, a tennis ball or the massage ball, they get in a little bit deeper, but you've got to be fairly accurate on your placement um, to get it to the right spot. Uh, the bigger balls, the massage ball, just a, a broader surface, so it hits a little bit more um, of your leg, but it doesn't get in quite as deep. So um, kind of pluses and minuses for both. And you'll notice I'm kind of using support with my hand. That's just a guide. I can kind of use my arm to pull that leg back and forth. And as much weight as you want to come forward, make it happen. Just make sure that you're staying strong through the belly, strong through the spine, and long through the spine. Now we transition. Ah, nah, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Either to the foam roller or I'm using the different ball just because my calves generally are not super happy. So you can either go ahead and cross right away or you can have that foot kind of there as a guide. I'm just going to use the strength of that left leg to press into the ball. I am right in the belly of my calf. So kind of right in the very center of that calf right now. And I'm just going to go front to back and side to side. So keeping that core strong, and again, always being mindful of the shoulders. So as we lean back, is that right for our shoulders? Because we're going to activate a little bit as we lift and start to roll. So as you lift and roll, what do you feel? Is it as bad on this side? Is it better? Oh my goodness. Rocking side to side. So that cross fibering, you guys, uh, it just, it can actually really improve um, the quality of the fascia work you do, making sure that we do that cross fibering, the pressure, um, just where we stay on wherever those trigger points are and applying pressure. And then that um, just right along the striation of the muscles and the fascia, helping to promote that easy movement and that flow, that sliding of the fascia as opposed to the grabbing of the fascia. Ooh. <laughs> and then we're just going to flex and roll. Cross fibering, just moving through the hip. So that ball and socket joint in the hip, giving a little range of motion. That's always good. Nice. And again, you can come as low or as high as you like. So I'm just going to transition because I know that I generally am fairly tight down at the base of my calf as well. And that can influence um, sometimes if I'm feeling a little bit of that plantar fasciata kicking in. So we don't want that. Oh my goodness, that's terrible stuff. All right, so we're going to give it a go with our foam roller. And then we're going to do a really nice stretch to see how those calves are feeling. So with our foam roller, kind of same idea. We're gonna place the foam roller underneath us and you can decide if you wanna be at the top of your calf, kind of mid belly or lower and you're gonna change it up, okay? So we're gonna bring the hands behind us, doesn't matter which direction your fingers are facing and we're gonna lift. As we lift those hips, almost coming to a reverse plank. So this is a great um, strengthener for the shoulders and for the core as we get that bonus of that fascia work for the calves. So my feet are about hip width apart, just soft feet, keeping that core strong and engaged and I'm just shifting forward and back. And then all of a sudden I'm gonna start to roll in and out with those feet. 
And as I open and close the feet, I'm just getting different angles all the way through the calf. Now I'm gonna bring those legs together and I'm gonna cross my right leg over my left. This actually feels really good. So I think I got a lot of work, a lot of good things done using that ball. And if at any time you need a break for your wrists or for your shoulders, just sit your bottom back down. And I'm gonna switch right leg to the foam roller, left leg crosses and roll. Keeping that core strong, just pulling those hips back and then pressing them forward. So I'm noticing that that right calf is still a little tight, but better. So that's the key is we want better each and every time we come back. All right, my friends, setting that foam roller off to the side out of your way. And let's come up onto hands and knees. Tabletop. Hands are shoulder width apart. Core is strong. Tuck your toes and lift your knees. And I want you to press those toes into the mat. Core is strong. By pressing those toes into the mat, we're getting another stretch for those feet, for the arches of the feet, for those calves. Breathe. Now release the knees. Walk your hands forward just a bit towards the top of the mat. Hands shoulder width apart. Lift your hips to down dog. So if this is your first time in down dog, we don't really have a reference, but I just want you to notice kind of how you're feeling through the calves. Hamstrings might still be a little tight. So that's okay. We're going to get there. Finding that breath. Slow it down. Let's bend that right knee, pressing your left heel towards the mat. So as we bend that right knee, just a deeper stretch down the back of that left leg. Switch sides, left knee bends, right heel down. Deeper stretch down the back of that right leg. Inhale up to the balls of the feet and exhale, press the chest and shoulders toward your thighs, reach your sit bones high. And then as you exhale, let your heels sink. Breathe. And let's inhale it to high plank. Bring the knees to the mat. Keep those toes tucked under. Walk your hands back underneath the shoulders. Lift those knees. Press those toes into the mat. Lift out of those shoulders. Knees just an inch off the mat. Strong through the belly. Gently release the knees, grab your foam roller, untuck those toes, and we're going to bring that foam roller right to the mat out in front of us. Give yourself plenty of space, so I'm just backing up a bit, and we're going to come forward, laying onto the foam roller. So I like to come onto my forearms, making me a little bit more level so I don't put too much pressure in that lower back, and I'm just laying here. So that pressure, kind of wherever you have the foam roller, I just want you to notice, what do you feel? I'm feeling a little bit tight. And then you're just gonna use those elbows almost like an army crawl to press yourself forward and back. So we don't wanna go any higher than the top of the hip, kind of to the groin area. So we don't wanna get into the hip bones or to the pelvis, and we don't wanna roll down to the point where we're on our knees. So we're staying just on that thigh. Working out the quads. Now I'm going to rock my hips and my feet to the right, and I'm going to do the same thing. So just a little shift, and just rolling forward and back. And then I'm going to take it back through the center and shift my left hip to the left, feet to the left, and just rolling. So I stay here for a few passes. And then I'm going to do movement as I roll forward and back. So that rocking of the hips and the feet side to side, we're getting cross fibering at the same time, going right along the striation of the muscle, keeping that core strong. Breathe. So we don't want to go super fast. Better to go a little bit slower than too fast, but just find that pace that feels good to you. And then come back to center. How's your breath? How's the intensity? Hopefully it's not too, too high. Now bend your knees and flex your feet. Do your best, don't let those hips sag. Stay strong through that belly. 
So we're just activating glutes and hamstrings and we're lengthening those quads. Releasing the legs, extend them out. And let's come back to the point where you can bring your knees to the mat, walking those hands back. And let's set that foam roller aside. And we're gonna check out how those quads feel. This will be a good test, actually, honestly, right here, good test. So as you're sitting back, if you're not taking, needing to take care of your knees, how do you feel? So can you sit back to the point and just feel pretty good? Not too much um, tension, not too much resistance, just a nice long quad. Now I want you to come up. So as we come up, I want you to press your hips forward. I want you to squeeze your buns. So as we come forward and we press those hips, this elongates those quadriceps. Breathe. We make fists with our hands. We're going to place our hands on either side of our spine, just about hip height, and then press those uh, fists into the small of the back as you lift your chest and gaze to the sky. So now we're elongating all of the muscles, all the tendons, all the ligaments to the front of the body. Camel pose. And come on back up. Breathe. Go ahead and sit it back to child's pose. Now child's pose, a beautiful resting place, but also a really nice stretch for the lower back, for the glutes, for those quadriceps. Find your breath. All right, and we're gonna come on back up. We're gonna tuck our toes, remember that down dog? Come back to your down dog. Find your breath. Shift your weight to your left foot, right toes to the sky, and we're gonna exhale and sweep that right foot through. Bringing that back knee to the mat, top of the foot to the mat. Just kind of let yourself be heavy through the front of the body. Let your hips be heavy, coming forward. This low lunge. So here's that quad stretch, guys. It's a super test. So hopefully with those little stretches we just did and that foam rolling, we'll have some success here. Left hand to the inside of the right foot, right arm extends out, circle it around, and let's draw that back foot in. Taking a hold of that foot if you can find it and drawing your heel in towards your bottom. So maybe we're not quite there. If you have a strap, wrap it around your ankle, hold on to it. If you can find your foot, start to pull that heel in. The more you pull the heel in, the deeper the stretch you're gonna find. Awesome. Hopefully feeling pretty darn good. Now, if you're feeling really good and you wish to, transfer that hand to the inside of your foot, take your gaze forward and we're gonna lift. Circling that left arm around behind. Can you find your foot with both hands? Breathe. Now again, you can start to pull that heel in towards your bottom. You certainly do not have to. You can stay right where you were. We circle that left arm back up and over, hinging forward once again, releasing the foot, one hand on either side of their foot, tuck the back toes, lift the hips, sweep it back, extend that right leg to the sky. And gently release it down. Did you feel that hamstring? Yeah, we're gonna get that too and gently alternate bending knees. Walk it out. Find your breath. As you exhale, let both heels sink. Shift your weight to your right foot, left toes to the sky. Exhaling and sweeping that left foot through. Back knee to the mat, top of the foot to the mat. Let those hips be heavy. So we're sinking in, feeling that really nice stretch through the front of the leg through the hip flexors, through the quads, core is strong. Placing that right hand to the inside of the left foot, left arm extends out, circles around, and let's draw that back foot in. Taking a hold of that foot if you can find it. Now it's gonna happen progressively that maybe you find it on one side before both. That's pretty normal and absolutely fine. So as you are able to find that foot, be kind, listen to your body. We can start to pull that heel in and you're gonna notice one side 
always seems to be a little tighter than the other. It's okay. It's part of the journey, guys. It's part of life. We're here. We're taking care of ourselves. We're doing the best we can with where we are in our practice right here, right now. If you like, turn your gaze forward, shift your hand to the inside of your foot or the arch of your foot, and we rise, circling that right arm around behind. Can you find your foot with, or with both hands? So it's a great chest opener. Wonderful quad stretch. Challenging balance great core work so there's so many beautiful things happening right now but right now i want you to focus on that quad okay so as we've given that quadriceps some love is it responding i hope so releasing that right hand circling it back up and over release your hand circle that left arm back up and over hand on either side of your foot tuck your toes lift your hips sweep it back and extend left leg to the sky and gently release. Do you feel that hamstring on the right side? Yeah, me too. And gently alternate bending knees. Walk it out. So our down dog, great stretch for those hamstrings, calves, Achilles tendons. Really nice strengthener for the shoulders, for the forearms, for the core. As you exhale it, both heels sink. And let's inhale it to high plank. Crocodile down. Press it through up dog and sit it back to child's pose. Who's ready for some hamstring work? Yes, me too. And let's walk those hands up. So here we are going to work with that little contraption that I showed you earlier with the two balls. If you do not have two balls that are the same size, um, tennis balls, lacrosse balls, what have you, um, it's okay, just use your single. Um, so I just have kind of one of my fun fuzzy socks um, that I put them into. And the fun thing about the sock is that um, it's easily washable, um, it's soft, uh, it's fuzzy, uh, it's colorful. So, um, you know, it's beautiful, right? So with this, uh, you can put whatever two balls in there that you like, okay? And we're gonna come over onto our bottom and I'm gonna slide the ball kind of above the back of my knee. So I don't wanna be right on my knee. Above the back of my knee, the opposite leg is going to be my support and the way I um, am able to move back and forth. So as I lift through that foot, lifting the bottom off. I wanna flex my foot cause that's gonna give me the longest muscles possible. And then I'm just gonna roll. So very similar to what we did for our calves. So if you're finding, wow, I don't have a whole lot of space and they're too small, go to the single. So I wasn't feeling a whole lot. Tennis ball, um, so I'm moving to the massage ball. Still not great, cool. That's why we have a plethora in our arsenal. Okay, so here, using that foot to kind of press and pull. So a lot of times hamstring work, fascia work on the hamstring, doesn't feel quite too bad, um, which is a beautiful thing. So uh, really it's the length of the hamstring that can be an issue unless you are a heavy lifter and you've done a bunch of deadlifts, um, tons of squats, uh, and you're really feeling it in your glutes. Um, but I find the kind of the culprits for me that really give me trouble are my IT bands and my calves. So hopefully you'll kind of feel the same thing. So I'm just gonna switch to the other leg, extending that leg out. Other foot's gonna be here to kind of help push forward and back. Now you can take that leg out to the side. So if it's in your way, just adapting and changing however you need to. And we're gonna do our hamstrings and we're also gonna do our IT bands at the same time. So just kind of checking in, rolling side to side, front to back, still doing that same kind of pass that we did for each of the others, calves and quads. Not too bad today, so that's fabulous. And then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna bring this just below my hip 
and I'm gonna come almost to a side plank. Again, I like to come down so that I'm more level, so I'm on my forearm, but you can be on your hand or your forearm. And I'm going to have top leg is gonna use to support. So I can press through this top foot to help minimize the amount of weight that's on that foam roller, or I can stack my feet for added weight. And I'm just gonna do that pass. So again, along the striation of the muscle, along the length of the IT band, and then I'm gonna roll the hip forward. Ah, yes. And then I'm gonna roll the hips back. And then I'm just gonna slowly kind of almost mermaidy rock side to side. Ah, uh, now this can be very challenging and not feel super great. So again, consistency, you guys. If you can get in three or four or five, 10 passes, ah uh, yes, perfect. But come back to it every day. This will change your days, your gait, your life. Seriously, getting into that IT band, helping to release that tension, that tightness, those knots. Mmm, this is much needed. All right, and we're gonna take it right into the other side. So as I flip to do, coming just below that hip, coming down onto my forearm. Again, that foot can come forward to support, to take some of that weight off of the hip, or we can stack. So you do you, take care of yourself. We just do that straight pass first, because as you start to rock the hips, that intensifies things. So taking care of you. We're not gonna come any lower than just above the knee. So we certainly don't wanna get out of that knee joint, okay? No need to come up to the hip. And I'm gonna to start to rock those hips forward and back. Yes. And I'm using this hand to kind of pull. I'm just su supporting with that left arm underneath me. And if I find a spot like I just did, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna breathe and I'm gonna try and smile. So if you find those spots, you guys, we all have them. And being consistent, you'll have fewer and fewer of those spots. So let that encourage you, right? If this is really just super intense, guys, the more you do this, the less intense it gets to be. Ah, oh, yes, and go ahead and rock back. All right, my friends, last one, we're gonna get into our hips and then we're gonna finish with our pigeon pose, which is always a fantastic place to be. So coming forward, we're gonna sit on our foam roller. So as we sit on the foam roller, we're gonna bring the hands back behind us once again, and we're gonna cross that right leg over the left. And then I'm gonna roll to the right hip and I'm gonna transition that left hand to my right knee. And as I'm gonna roll, Okay, as I roll, I'm getting into the hip, to the glute. And I can come up kind of to that highest point on the glute, not to your lower back, but to that glute, and then come back. And you can rock side to side, or you can just stay front to back. So I'm finding a little spot right here, and I'm just gonna do a little rock forward and back. So a little transitioning of weight distribution, listening to your body, staying strong through your core so that we're not really letting go of our posture. And I'm just gonna stay here, see how that feels. I'm gonna point and flex my foot and see what that does. Activating different muscles, feeling pretty good. And then we roll to the other side. So crossing that left foot over the right knee, transitioning that right hand to that left knee, and I'm gonna rock to that left hip. So I'm gonna turn so that I can see you and you can see a little bit better. So left foot over the right knee, right hand to the knee, and we press it away. Now we're gonna roll to that left hip and just rock. So I'm using this right leg to kind of pull and push. I'm using support and helping along with the shoulder and the hand. Ah. So again, just kind of coming up to that meaty part of your bum, 
want to make sure. So if you are um, don't have a whole lot of flesh, um, I have plenty, so we're we're good. I got enough for both of us. But if you're really um, on your bone, we don't want to be on the bone. So rock back to the meatiest part of your bottom and find some of that little bit of cushion, okay? I don't want you on your bone, that doesn't feel good. No bruising, please, take care of yourself. And then I'm just gonna slowly rock side to side. Now I can do this while I move, or I can do this while I'm staying still. Do both. So just take care of yourself. Listen to your body. Ah, this actually feels really good. And rock forward and back. Beautiful, you guys. So we've really put a lot of work into our lower body today. Um, it will thank you, and the rest of your body will respond. Um, when your gait is better, the lower body is uh, freer of all of those um, muscular and fascial um, entanglements. Your body just responds. You stand taller. You feel better. Your gut's not all tied up because there's just not as much pain and discomfort. It's a beautiful thing. Awesome, all right, so here we come. Go ahead and release down and get rid of that foam roller. All right, my friends, so pigeon pose. Bringing the hands forward, we're gonna start with our right leg and we're gonna pull that right knee through to the inside. Bringing that knee right out between the hands. Chest is tall, hips are heavy. So if your lower back is not in love with this guys it's okay bring your hands forward what i want you to feel is that really nice stretch that release in your hip maybe come down onto your forearms if this feels fantastic and you want to add a little bit more we're going to lift just slightly and we're going to make a fist with that left hand and place that left elbow to the mat, stacking your right palm up over the fist and gently press that left elbow into the mat as you lift your gaze up over that right elbow. Breathe. Ah, oh, feels so good. Releasing that right hand, lifting yourself back up. Let's get that quad stretch in one more time. Placing that right hand to the outside of the knee, left arm circles around, draw your back foot in. Take a hold of it if you can find it. Now sometimes it might feel better to you in pigeon pose than being up in that kneeling in that runner's lunge. Sometimes our body's a little more cooperative here. If you like, pull your foot into the crook of the elbow, spin your fingertips to the sky, extend right arm out, lift it high, up and back, and take hold of those fingertips for our mermaid or king pigeon. So hopefully all that work we have put in to the quadriceps, those hip flexors, the IT bands, hamstrings, calves, they all come into play here. Now there's a lot of upper body here too, so just be mindful, be kind. Releasing one hand on either side of your foot, tuck your toes, lift it back to plank, and then pull that left knee through. Top of the foot to the mat, nice and tall. Find your breath. Now again, we can bring the hands forward. Just always lengthening, never sinking, always standing tall. You can come down onto your forearms. Just feel how that feels, intensifying the stretch for the hip. Maybe feels better on the back. If you want to add that rotation, we come back up to the palms. Make a fist with that right hand. Place that right elbow to the mat. Stack that left palm against that right fist. And then lift that left elbow towards the sky as you rotate and take your gaze to the sky. Finding that breath. Slowing that breath down. Releasing that left hand to the mat. Coming back to center. Walk those hands back up. Let's place that left hand to the outside of the, right, or the left knee. Circle that right arm around and let's draw that back foot in. Take a hold of it if you can find it. Using the strength of the arm, pull your heel in towards your bottom, feel that nice stretch all the way down through the front of that right leg. Hip flexors, 
quadriceps and as you take a hold of the inside of your foot can you feel that really nice stretch through the front of your shoulder if it feels right to you pull that foot into the crook of the elbow spin your fingertips towards the sky if you like extend left arm out lift it high circle the arms around behind take a hold of those fingertips and breathe king pigeon or mermaid pose And gently release and release the foot, circling that arm back up and over. Tuck the back toes and sweep it back to plank. Let's crocodile down. Press it through up dog. Oh, and one final child's pose. Awesome job today, you guys. Hopefully your body is just feeling super good learn some new things about yourself new tools to have in your tool belt to help stay healthy learning that we need to be a little more consistent in our self-care and let's walk those hands up come over onto one hip sweep your feet around I just want to thank you. Thank you for your time, for your faith in me, for your energy that you bring with you each and every time you come, even if it's just a smidge, guys, and you're feeling not so fabulous. I hope that through working together, um, the energy levels increase, your confidence increases, your abilities increase, you're, you're standing taller, you're feeling better. Um, it's just a better, brighter world. Uh, and I love that you invite me to be a part of it. So thank you. Um, any questions, any comments, if you need anything at all, I'm always here for you. Um, let me know. And uh, until the next time, my friends, light and love from me to you. Until the next time, my friends, namaste.